cool. Well, welcome, guys. Um, online information session on the 18th of Jan. Welcome to 2022. Um, so first up, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, we're excited to um, yeah, catch up with everyone um, around the UK side of things. Um, we've got um, a couple of guests um, on the line, Matt Taylor, um, who will go through some introductions in a sec. He's um, tuning in from our UK office, um, or London specifically, and I can see Claire's just popped in there too, which is great. So um, hello, everyone. Um, so throughout the session, obviously, um, we want to, this to be as interactive as possible. Um, so feel free to type questions into the chat. If you have anything which you wanted to discuss, obviously that's a great place to do it. Um, we'll leave time for questions throughout and then also at the end too, where we can have a bit of a verbal conversation. Um, we might even stop to everyone throughout the, um, the webinar itself just to pop in and say hello. Um, but it's really good to see so many faces who are interested to move abroad to the UK. Um, so to start off, um, we'll introduce myself. So my name's Tyler and I'm a lead global opportunities co consultant with ANZ UK. Um, I'm originally a PE health teacher. I graduated from Victoria University in 2015. I taught with ANZ UK would have been for about six months uh, locally here in Melbourne before moving over to the UK in the around about June 2016. I taught in London for about nine months um, doing a mix of casual and contract work. Um, my contract was a, um, a role at a pre referral unit um, where I taught out in West London. I personally lived in East London my whole time there, um, but then I eventually ended up joining the ANZ UK London office um, in 2017 where I worked for about three and a half years. Um, before moving home at the end of 2020 um, and then started to play the role of helping educators such as everyone on this call make the journey back over to the UK. So I was lucky enough to work with Maddie Taylor for about a year of my time in London. So it's great to see Matt online. Um, and yeah, that's me. And um, yeah, absolutely love living over the seas and can't wait to speak to everyone about your all your journeys too. So uh, Claire, welcome. Glad you could join us. Um, I want to say hello to everyone. Yep. Hi, everybody. So my name's Claire and I'm a New Zealand trained primary teacher. Um, I taught in New Zealand for three years before I managed to save up enough money to go on my big OE. Um, and I went straight to London and I lived and worked in London for two years. I did a mix of day to day and long term teaching and I ended up teaching in special needs over there, which was amazing. Um, and you don't need to have any qualifications to move into the special needs sector and having had a bit of experience I really loved um, the opportunity to do something a bit different from straight classroom teaching so um, yeah loved that got some amazing travels and didn't do all the travels I wanted to because the two years just flies by but um, came back to New Zealand and I've been helping Kiwis or you know New Zealand based educators um, head off on the journey ever since then. So yeah, it's amazing. It's the best thing you'll ever do. Uh, lovely. Thank you, Claire. Um, yeah, so as Tyler said, uh, my name is Matt. Um, I've been working in educational recruitment for about nine years now. I'm working with ANZ UK for just over two. Um, Working with educators like yourselves was the reason that I joined ANZ UK to support those overseas journeys and to share with you guys the impact that you can have, not only working within the schools in London, but also supporting your journey and making sure that when you're not working, you have an absolute blast as well and you get to experience the city and the culture and, and buzz off around the bits of um, kind of the outskirts of London and go and see the UK too. So we're here to support not only your journey within the schools you end up working in, but also that that holistic approach is so important to us that when you come to London, it's I'm a native Londoner, so when you come to the city that I've called home forever, you have an absolute blast and, and you go back with some incredible memories and, uh, and, and you've had a great impact on the young people you worked with. And that's those are the exciting bits and hearing your story. So um, yeah, yeah hope, hopefully we can give you some more information about how you fulfill that journey. Yeah, love that, Maddie. And I hope that after this, there's lots of questions answered, but we do hope that there's lots more questions that you have to ask as well. So um, like we said, feel free to chuck any of those in the chat too. But we got a question for everyone, which is good. So um, hopefully everyone can see this. Um, please shout it out if you can't. Um, we want to know where you're from. Um, so if everyone could just, um, you know, spend a second just um, posting in to the... Um, or answering the poll more so, um, where everyone is from. Apologies for the others in the world. Um, we, we don't want to um, um, be um, discriminatory to anyone who's not from those three, four places, but we'll try to be as broad as we can. Um, but we've got pretty much a consistent um, uh, cohort on the call, actually, which is great. So um, hopefully that everyone can see that. So we've got a heck, heck of a lot of Victorians and the New South Welshmen and ladies on the call too. So 
no one from Queensland or New Zealand. Sorry, Claire. Um, oh, but, yeah, the Kiwis. Most of the people are here for dinner. Are we here soon? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, but we'll, we'll keep on. We'll keep on moving through. So thanks for that, guys. Um, and Neil, great question there as well. Um, so session for um, only people in London. Definitely not. Um, so obviously Matt is from the London office. Myself and Claire just mentioned London, but we're all about all the other opportunities in the UK too. So. Yeah, no stress if you're thinking London's the only option. It, it definitely isn't. So, um, but what we'll be covering, so we'll move through this nice and quickly. So um, this is the, um, essentially the overview of the session we'll cover today. Um, so it won't have everything you need to know about the move, but we hope that all the bits and pieces, um, you'll have, um, you know, those initial insights to it as well. So we might skim over a few bits. It's not because they're not important. It's just because we've got a lot to go through. So you'll get the slide pack, you'll get the recording, and we've got so many resources available for you outside of this presentation. And obviously you can ask any questions too. So we'll go through travel updates, visa requirements, compliance requirements, what it takes to work in the UK, partnering with ANZ UK, um, working in UK schools and the types of work that's available. We want to know about what your ideal role is and also speak about the relocation bonuses that are offered for everyone as well. Um, we'll talk about where to live, how much it costs to live there as well. Um, our community groups, our Facebook groups, um, we're really big on community ANZ UK um, and really want to make sure you feel a part of the ANZ UK community locally and abroad. Um, PD, obviously a big one, resources. There's a plethora of resources available. Uh, local knowledge, we've got Matt on the call and hopefully Claire and I can um, you know, pass on some of our um, wisdom, if you would, uh, from our time over in the UK. Um, questions, queries, um, and we want feedback as well. So yeah, feel free to let us know um, how everyone found, finds the session too. Um, cool, we've got um, quickly one more question before we jump on into it. Um, Thanks for asking, uh, answering the last one. Guys, we've got one more, just so we learn a little bit about everyone else on the call. So I want to know, has everyone been to the UK before? As a nice first point for us. Awesome, guys. Got a couple more to answer there. We're almost there. Nice, it's a good mix, this one. It's not just, um, we've only got two answers, but it is a nice mix. Um, <laughs> So we got nine that have been and then four that haven't, which is super exciting as well. Um, so how great to embark on a journey and move to a new country when you haven't been there before too. That's um, yeah, what an exciting, um, you know, journey to embark on. So good stuff, but we'll talk about ANZ UK. So introduction. So um, obviously we've got um, a few different nationalities for us on the call, which is great. So obviously, um, you know, we've got three different um, uh, time zones on the call from myself being in Australia, Matt, the UK and Claire in New Zealand. So for us, obviously we are a global business as the slide might suggest. We've got offices across Australia um, in the mostly the Eastern Seaboard, but um, we've got in Brisbane, Sydney, New South, um, in Victoria, uh, Geelong, um, ACT, and then we have an office we have open in Perth, but it's not currently open, but it hopefully will be back soon. Um, so anywhere across Australia, we can help with contracts, temporary permanent work in early childhood, primary, secondary schools. Um, that obviously continues use over to the UK too, um, where we've got offices in London, Bristol, Surrey in Wales, um, where we can help with contract temp perm work um, across uh, early childhood centres all the way up to uh, secondary schools as well. Um, and then our other two locations where we um, trade um, under different names, but still under the ANZ UK family is Scoot Education, um, where we um, are based in the USA. So mostly on the Western seaboard, um, but we can help out, obviously, if you are looking to go over um, a bit more inland as well, in Texas, Arizona, and we're opening up an office in New York too. So it's available only to Australian or um, Australian citizens on an E3 visa, um, but also American citizens as well. So if you think in USA um, as an option, that's amazing. Um, we can support before or after your UK journey. Um, New Zealand as well, where Claire is obviously um, located. We've got offices um, in Wellington, Christchurch in Auckland. Claire's based out of Auckland. Um, there we can support with contract temporal perm work as well. Um, so if these different geographies outside of the UK interest you, do let us know. Um, we work as one team at ANZ UK. So whether it's in the USA, New Zealand, um, UK or Australia, that we can help you work there. The Canada point as well, just so everyone knows, you know, Canada, that'd be amazing to go teach there. Unfortunately, we have an office in Canada, but it is support educators leaving Canada. Um, so um, the Canadian team there um, help educators, mostly Canadians, to find work in Australia and the UK too, and New Zealand. 
So if you think in Canada, it is a little bit trickier to get education work there as well. So just, um, yeah, an extra point there. And the two lovely lads in the top right of the corner, that's Dan Mundy and Ben Goldsmith. So they're the two founders of ANZ UK, which was founded about 16 years ago, where Dan um, was sending teachers over to the UK to Ben Goldsmith. And uh, Matt Taylor is actually sitting in BG's or Ben's office at the moment too. So they're both still partnering, uh, well, so leading the company. Um, so he's, there it is there, the bricks, are, bricks on the wall. Um, <laughs> Perfect. So um, that's a snapshot, uh, but we'll keep on moving because um, there's plenty of us to work through. Um, there is no one better than to give an update on this, Matt, than you because you're, you're in the UK. Um, I know everyone on the call would want to know what, what's happening. Um, give, us the, give us the scoop. Uh, indeed. So um, to say life's return to normal is probably overstretching it a touch, but we're really not too far off. So um, in terms of work, all educational settings are open. Um, um, some secondary schools are teaching students who are required to wear a mask whilst they're attending lessons, but teachers aren't required to wear masks in most educational settings whilst they're teaching. That's down to the fact that it's very difficult to communicate whilst you're wearing a mask, as, as those who wore masks will know. So when you're teaching a lesson, you're, you're not expected to wear a mask. Um, um, in terms of life in the UK, um, everything is open. So um, Scotland and Wales had some restrictions that um, uh, either were eased on the Monday just gone or will be eased on the Monday coming. Um, but to give you an idea of, of how life is at the moment, so myself and my wife went out with some pals on the weekend and we went 10 pin bowling and then played crazy golf and then went and had a few beers and then and so that that all ran as normal there was no covid pass required to get in to any of those venues um no covid restrictions were in place there um all this all the major sporting events are running still so if you want to come and watch football cricket in the summer rugby all those major events are running with the big um so all the big sporting events are running um theaters cinemas you you can go and um as long as once you're in your seat in the theater or cinema you can take your mask off and enjoy your movie or your or or the show you've gone to see um the the reason we've managed to get back to that is largely because um uh 80 percent of the population have, are fully vaccinated um and so those restrictions have managed to be lifted um in terms of traveling around europe um you can travel once you're based in the UK, you can travel around Europe with relative ease. Um, it's not quite as easy as it was before Brexit, um, but, um, uh, but but certainly after after filling a few forms and you can get around Europe and go, go and experience the joys of Europe. Um, flights are, are really cheap at the moment. It's a great time to travel. Um, so if you are going to come over and come and experience a bit of Europe, then, then now's a really good time to do it. Um, the best way to keep up to date with what's happening in the UK is to jump on the gov.uk website where um, where COVID information is posted on a regular basis because it, ch it does change very frequently. Um, um, but yeah, to, to do a quick refresh, so my students in secondary schools will wear, will wear masks whilst they're being taught. It's not an expectation of teachers. Um, and um, yeah, life flows pretty much as normal pre-pandemic. So come and find us and come and have a great time. <laughs> really positive to hear that, Matty, as well. And um, I know everyone who on the call would have, um, you know, obviously the past two years, um, there were lots of barriers in place for international travel and there's still a lot of considerations in place to making that journey over. And um, But it is good to know, obviously, that the schools are open and really busy too. Like I know every time we catch up with the UK team, there are lots of needs at the moment in UK schools. So if you're a little bit worried about work or anything like that, um, definitely don't be. Um, and the, I guess the... Um, the trajectory of the UK government is to keep the schools open as well. Um, very much similar here in Australia too. Um, I know obviously lots of Victorians on the call and lots of New South Welshmen on the call too. Uh, we've experienced lots of lockdowns and school closures, but um, we're hoping that across the world, 2022 shouldn't see too much of that anywhere, uh, but specifically the UK and in Australia too. But just shout out if you've got any questions for everyone now. We touched on some international travel requirements um, in the next couple of slides as well. So um, before we jump onto the next slide too, um, we just want to learn a little bit more more about yourself um, or everyone on, everyone on the call, I should say. Um, we want to know if you, um, also your background in education. So whether you're a teacher or whether you are a teaching assistant too. So um, feel free to participate in this one if you like. Oh, 
awesome guys. I'll just give you another 10 or so seconds. Um, just, just, just whilst you're um, answering the questions there, guys, just to, just to touch yeah. on what Tyler mentioned about, about, the, about the work opportunities, and I will cover it um, in a few slides going forward, but just to reassure that we, we, we have more bookings than we can possibly fill at the moment for long-term and for temp work. So now's a great time to, to come over and see us because we know we can, we can absolutely guarantee that we can keep you really, really busy. Yeah, super fun to hear and we've got a good mix as well um so we've got a mix of graduate teachers and one year experience teachers too so good for us to know that we won't spend too much time teaching teaching talking about teaching assistant and support staff work um but it's obviously yeah, great to know we've got some a good mix of um you know experienced teachers and graduate teachers too so um moving on claire why why would you why did you teach in the uk and why should everyone <laughs> on the call consider it <laughs> Yeah, it's actually really good for us to find out your reasons for heading over to the UK as well, because it helps us sort of guide you perhaps into the right um, role or location as well. My reasons for going over was definitely to travel. Um, I wanted to go to Paris for the weekend instead of going to Taupo for the weekend. You know, um, there's not a lot of opportunities um, in New Zealand to get out and to experience, you know, all the different cultures and things. So, yeah. 100% travel. Um, I wanted to live in England. I wanted to experience everything over there. Um, and I got all of that. Like, it's, a, it's an awesome reason for going over there. Um, but as an aside, I also, um, my CV when I came back to New Zealand was so much stronger. Um, I had international teaching experience. Um, I'd only taught in two levels before I left New Zealand. By the time I left London, I'd taught all different levels, um, you know, from year zero right through to year six. Um, I taught special needs. I taught in um, lots of different schools with different philosophies. So, you know, I'd really broadened my experience there. And a lot of our teachers upon returning home um, step really easily into more leadership roles and things like that as well. So it's a really nice stepping stone. Um, one of the reasons, yeah, obviously the community, and that's something that ANZ UK is amazing at, is the educator community. Um, you'll meet people from um, lots of different countries who are all um, like-minded and doing the same thing as you are. So um, it's, yeah, you'll, we have lots of great events that will connect you with those sorts of people. Um, and yeah, that, that progression, the career progression is, is a great aside, um, apart from the travel, obviously. Yeah, it's such a big one, that progression. Um, like so many of my personal friends, people I've worked with, ANZ UK teachers, um, the, the works, coming home after having two years of international experience holds you in such good stead for your future employability. Um, that's one aspect, but the, the life experience as well, the personal growth, it's, it's the whole kick and boodle. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, if you're definitely on the fence, consider it and, and just find that right time for you. But um, yeah, you hit the nail on the head, Claire, in so many of those points. So, um, and, um, Ange has just asked a question. Ange, we do have a lot of teachers who are more experienced and the schools really like that as well. So um, heading over, you know, the, the reasons and all they're still the same, perhaps yours are more focused on the travel side of things, but schools really value teachers with experience. So it's a, it's a positive. It's great. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, it's just that having that Australian or New Zealand training experience um schools over in the uk they really really value overseas trained teachers and the impact they can have on the classroom and also the staff environment too um so yeah definitely um and you won't you won't be the only one um there's um there are more lots of other teachers at ANZ uk um definitely have that level of experience too but um obviously we have that mix of graduates as well um before we jump into the slide um which i know everyone's probably thinking where do i sit in this looking at the slides there and i know there's lots of writing so don't feel like you have to retain everything you will get this slide pack shared with you um we got another poll Oops, no, sorry, we've already shared that one. Apologies. Um, here we go. Um, we want to find out when everyone's looking to go as well. Um, so if everyone just wanted to contribute to this poll too, um, and just sort of give us a bit of an overview of, I'm like, Ange, I know that you're looking to go in April as well, which is exciting about speaking to Ange and a couple of the guys on the call too, I can see um, Caitlin um, and also um, Alex. We've had a couple of chats. I think that's all I've spoken with on the call unless I've missed someone, apologies. But um, I know that Ange, you're, you're looking to move this year as well, which is super exciting. Um, but thanks guys for that. I'll give everyone another second if you haven't done it yet. Nice. So again, we got, oh, a good mix. 
So this year and Jan 20, the first two are the same. Um, so that's a bit of a, a trick question there. Um, it's good to know we got a few people moving at, at the start of this year. Um, so apologies, we need to update these polls from last year's webinar. Um, so, and then obviously a couple in 2023. So great stuff, guys. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, cool, so visa requirements. So this is gonna be a little different for everyone, um, albeit like most people will probably be falling into this youth mobility category as well. Um, so as a bit of a snapshot, the youth mobility visa is the most common visa for educators to travel over to the UK on. Um, it's an un currently, in its current iteration, it's an under 31 two year working holiday visa, um, but it is changing most likely this year to an under 35 three year working holiday visa. So if you're looking to apply for this visa, after June time, it's likely you'd apply for the new iteration and it'll get you three years over in the UK. Um, it costs about two and a half thousand pounds, um, so about two thousand um, pounds in its actual, the total costs. Um, sorry, it says uh, 1100 pounds, it's two and a half thousand Australian dollars. Apologies, um, I mixed up my dollars there. Um, and you need to have two and a half thousand pounds in savings before you uh, apply for the visa. It takes about six months to apply for that visa, and we have a visa support team who can help you through the application process um, if you want to go through that. It costs about $99 to go through the service. You can get some of that um, in a re um, reimbursed back to you. Um, but that's a visa you could apply for yourself, but the visa support team are really great. Sharon and Susie, um, a couple of the guys in the call might already be speaking with them. Um, they're super helpful and they'd be able to go through the process with you too. Um, but that's the visa I was on. And I think, Claire, you went over on that visa too. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, and that can lead once you've finished up on that visa to what's called the skilled worker visa, um, or you could be applying for the skilled worker visa before you go to the UK. Um, so the skilled worker visa is a sponsorship visa. So once you finish your two or three years, depending on when you're going to the UK, a school can sponsor you to stay on in the UK. So as an example, I was sponsored, uh, but I was sponsored by ANZ UK to stay on. So I was able to stay for four and a half years living in the UK. Um, but if you're at a school, you're loving it, um, you know, it's a great culture. You don't want to leave the UK, which I don't reckon everyone on the call will want to leave after the two years um, or maybe three. It's definitely, you know, uh, you get the taste for it, but you want, you, a lot of people do want to stay. Um, and having those conversations early doors of schools around sponsorship op opportunities is good to do. Um, you know, if you know a school will take people on the sponsor, it could be a school to continue working at, um, potentially, you know, not maybe on the day one working at that school, you're asking those questions, but after you've been there for a period of time, it is good to explore that. Um, and you can get sponsored to stay on for two to three years if you like but it is with that same school youth mobility visa it's flexible you can work with any company any school you like you can work in a bar if you wanted to mix things up even though we'd probably recommend staying in the classroom um better work environment um so that those two options there the other one's ancestry visa so if you've got a um, parent i say if you've got a grandparent who's born in the uk you're eligible for that that's a five-year visa and you can reapply for that visa as well so if you want to look at the, the family lineage if you're not sure where the grandparents are born Double check it before you apply for any visa because you might get lucky. Um, but obviously you need to have a grandparent there. There's no other way around it. The other one is the UK passport or um, a partner or spouse of visa too. So um, obviously, um, yeah, just have a think about which one you would be eligible for, um, but we'll help you out in terms of the direction, the guidance with that as well. Um, but yeah, we'll keep on moving through, but that's a bit of a snapshot of the visa options for everyone as well. Oh, no, we just we had a, we had a quick question pop up there. So um, from Georgia, can you apply for a second tier five youth mobility visa? No, you cannot, unfortunately. Um, not in the current iteration. Um, there are changes coming in place to this visa. So I'd say watch this space um, in the sense of that it could change, um, but it's not, not nothing's being said about that change coming into place too. So. Um, yeah, it is a definition, a little bit cliche. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, if you would. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're looking to apply, make sure it's the right time for you, knowing that, that in the current iteration, you won't be able to reapply for that visa. Um, but great question though. Um, Claire, I think you had this slide, I believe. Oh, right? sorry, I did, yes. Oh, no, you're right, apologies. I wasn't quite, <laughs> right. I had to double check. <laughs> yeah, so start, part of the registration process is um, initially you'll have a chat with one of us based here on this side of the world. Uh, and we'll sort of get the ball rolling. So um, things that we need from you before um, we sort of hook you up with the UK side is a CV. And it's really good to have a really, it's important to have a really good CV. Um, we'll provide you with a template. We'll, we can give you a hand around that. Um, happy to, for you to send us through drafts to take a look at. Um, you're competing against people who are on the ground in the UK, so you really need your CV to sort of shine. Um, 
uh, references are also really important. And as you see, we need three of them. Um, if you're experienced, we, we want your principals as a referee. If you're a new grad, then your mentor teachers um, are the best referees for that. Um, and then police checking, um, and the, that's a requirement there. So obviously, if you've just lived in Australia all the time, we just need your relevant Australian police check, same with New Zealand. But if you have, although it's unlikely in, the, in this day and age, but if you lived um, somewhere in, you know, three years ago, then we'll need to sort of cover, um, you know, your, your history there as well. So um, we will take you through the process for all of these things. Um, but yeah, CV, you know, that's a, that's a biggie, so important. Yeah, the CV is a huge one to help us get you the right role too. Um, and that's what um, um, the schools team, such as what Maddie um, heads up, will send out to schools. And um, the photo as well. And that video CV, it's probably not as bold as what it could oh, be. Um, yeah, um, I, we, we should have it at the top there, to be honest. Um, yeah. It's definitely something to consider. Um, and we'll give you an online um, links to an online platform where you can go through those steps. Literally two, three minutes max. And it just makes your CV sparkle from the crowd, essentially, and brings it to life. So schools in the UK are really receptive to that. Um, so definitely something to consider um, doing throughout the process um i know we got a couple of questions as well so neil uh, do you need a police check if you're a uk citizen yes you definitely do um so you need um the a police check to be able to work in a uk school regardless of your nationality um at a minimum a dbs and then the overseas one if you've lived overseas too so um we have a, a compliance team um who are great they'll reach out to you no um sooner than two months for your incident arrival date um, because the police checks and references need to be up to date and valid because we get audited by um, an external company called absco um, so we have to sort of adhere to their standards. So um, yeah, expect contact from the compliance team about two months out as well. Um, and then jo Joanna, um, so for references, what if you've worked at the same school since graduating, that would be tricky to get three. Two is 100% fine. Um, we request three just if we can have it on file. That's amazing. Two is the minimum requirement, but we always ask for three. So if you only got two, don't sweat on it. That's 100% fine. Um, but great questions there, guys, as well. Um, we can we'll keep on moving. Um, we, if if you if you have worked in the same school and and only a head teacher will provide you a reference from that school, we can also take character referees from you as well. Um, so we 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 can we, we can work around that and um, and our our compliance team are, are are really sharp and really hot on that type of stuff and are here to support you every step of the way with questions like that. Yeah, definitely. And references is a great one thing to consider when you're in the UK as well. So um, if you're looking to do casual work or contract work, um, once you're obviously you get to the UK, um, the employability piece on the way back, um, speak to schools about that too. So sort of have that reference in the, in the forefront of your mind around, you know, putting your best foot forward. Um, and obviously before you go to, that's when it's paramount. But yeah, when you get there, that, that continues on too. So um, but yeah, further compliance requirements. So we touched on some key uh, bits just before. Um, all, all super important, but we've got a few more as well. Uh, Matt, have you just wanted to run through this for the guys too? Yeah, of course, of course. So um, uh, no, no matter what role you're heading over for or, or where you want to start teaching, obviously we do need to see your qualifications. Um, they Ideally, they'd be cited in person, but um, we, we can do virtual registrations now so we can take a screenshot of you with your qualifications at that point. Um, again, with, uh, with the rules around COVID, that may shift and change. Um, oh, sorry, Matt. You've um, you've gone on mute. I think maybe the headset. We've lost him. That's all right. I, I might. I'll jump on this one, Maddie, while she's getting the headset sorted. Patch in a second. You get um the audio back. <laughs> got no luck there so what matt was saying obviously is um we can we can cite your um equals in person um if not we'll can do equals too um so obviously matt was saying that might may change with COVID and the change in requirements um but there's every chance we could obviously yeah have um that um to be a, a change in requirement by the time people fly later on in the year too so um but yeah we'll give you updates on that but equals will be the virtual way to submit that um i think matt you might be back or or well, not we've still lost him He's still on mute, Matt. So no on mute, you're, the audio is not working. So um, but I'll, I'll keep on working through this call. Um, so this point here, training and safeguarding. Um, so everyone will be um, um, required to do a mandatory safeguarding training course. Um, safeguarding is a mandatory reporting in the UK. Um, so you'll get a course that you need to do in the lead up to your move. Um, our compliance team send you all the links for this as well. 
We'll also look to do a virtual registration with you before you arrive in the UK. Um, so our goal is that you're cleared to work before you actually fly over to the UK. So in theory, if you wanted to, we wouldn't recommend to do it, but you could land at Heathrow Airport and go straight to a school um, because we've obviously got you cleared to work before you get there. But definitely don't do that. Go to the hostel, hotel, check in, whatever you need to do. Um, but you could work straight away after you touch down in the UK. So, um, and we want to obviously make you feel really part of the ANZ UK community. And, and, and this process does really help with that as well in terms of meeting the team in the the UK um, and then obviously meeting us in person too once you've obviously arrived into the UK as well. Um, for um, the experienced teachers on the call um, in terms of uh, teaching uh, accreditation over in the UK, so you can teach in the UK for up to four years as an overseas trained teacher if you've got a teaching qualification in Australia. If you are fully registered, you can apply for what's called a QTS. So for the Victorians on the call, it's your VIT. For everyone from New South Wales, it's your NESA. Um, so if you've got your full accreditation, we recommend to apply for your QTS if you're going to the, to the UK. Um, so more specifically England, the Wales has a slightly different requirement, which is changing. Um, so if anyone wants to go to Wales, um, reach out to your consultant or myself or the team because it is updating this, the accreditation to teaching Wales. So they're, they're aligning themselves to the QTS. Um, but if you're a grad for the seven or eight grads we've got on the call, no sweat, you can teach in the UK as a graduate teacher, but only for four years. If you wanted to stay on longer than four years, um, you'd need to look at um, getting your QTS and go through what's called your NQT year, your newly qualified teacher year. Lots of acronyms. Don't, yeah. don't worry if you're thinking, that, oh my God, there's all these acronyms coming out. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing to remember is up to four years as an overseas trained teacher. Um, but if you want to get your QTS, we, we would recommend to do that as well. Um, just just on that, I don't know if uh, don't know if I'm back now and live. You are, you're back, Maddie. Yeah. Um, so um if you if you want support in gaining QTS and gaining a PGCE, we work in partnership with the University of Northampton. Um, and uh, lots of our overseas educators who want to stay on for an extended period of time and want to get QTS and a PGC work on a course through the University of Northampton. Um, and so that's a really exciting opportunity if you do decide to stay on and want to upskill yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a great shout out there. Um, and cool, just moving through, um, I know we've got a heap of slides to work through. So um, this one here obviously um, is ever changing in terms of the international travel requirements. So obviously Matt before said, obviously jumps on the relevant government websites. We do really recommend to do that when looking to, to travel, specifically really speak to the airline as well. But in, in a nutshell, um, there's no travel exemption to go to the UK or to leave Australia anymore if you're fully vaccinated. Um, so definitely, um, yeah, it's great news. To one, of the, one of the big barriers over the past two years was being recently removed. Um, and obviously vaccination is highly recommended. Um, it's not a, man, a mandate in the UK, such as it is in many states in Australia, um, but obviously we do highly recommend to be vaccinated and most people on the call I would hope or think would, would already be so. Um, and that, that status in terms of fully vaccinated um, may change in terms of a booster shot. Um, that's not set in stone yet, but just be aware that might be something just to consider when you are looking to plan your travels. You may need to have a booster at that point, but at the moment it's double jabbed. Um, for your journey over, um, obviously we will provide you lots of information. We've got a blog um, post that we regularly update. Um, I'll post it into the chat now as well, just so everyone can have a look at that. Um, but the biggest thing will just be being across the testing requirements too. So at the moment you need to book and pay for a COVID-19 test in England and Wales before you get there and then fill out a passenger locator form as well. Um, but you can go, the, the, the borders are open. Um, so yeah, definitely be um, aware that that is possible, um, but just be um, across the, the um, travel requirements of the countries you're going to en route. Um, sometimes countries may become on the red list for the UK, such as the um, many of the South African countries um, recently with the Omicron variant, um, but there's no countries currently from when I checked the other day that are on the red list. But just be aware that if you're traveling through, you know, Southeast Asia or Africa, Europe, or even parts of Europe itself, um, just be aware of there may be some travel um, requirements you need to be present with. But um, if you're going straight to the UK, there's a red or chance you'll probably be just fine. Um, but again, just shout out to our team if you have any questions, but really promote speaking to your airline in preparation for the, the, for the flight as well and travel insurance probably more than ever um just make sure you've got your travel insurance booked at least for that journey over um just something we always recommend to do as well um cool moving through the nhs um matt speak to us about the nhs oh uh, yes so um so the nhs stands for national health service and it's a government funded medical and healthcare service that, that anyone who lives in the uk you can it's uh, free at the point of service um um, and so no matter what happens to you health-wise, you've always got the support of that. 
Um, one part of your youth mobility visa is apply, you, um, you pay a health surcharge. Um, so that entitles you to use the NHS for free. Um, your subscription, your uh, prescription, sorry, will be either free or largely subsidised. You get free appointments with a GP and treatment, um, free hospital treatment and um, dental treatment can be free as well. Um, so you can access that uh, throughout your stay in the UK. Yeah, um, it's, it, I was going to say it's re really handy too. Um, like I personally didn't have to use it a lot when I was there, but whenever I did, it, you can just literally walk into a GP as long as you register with your local um, authority GP, you can do it straight away as well. And just as a comparison, the $45 um, is what it equates to for private health and the equivalent of getting private health insurance in the UK. I know I pay about $150 or something like that for private health. So it's substantially substan substantially cheaper. Um, so the initial visa cost might think, oh, that's that's really expensive. But at the end of the day, it gets you access to the NHS. So um, it, it is a yeah, nice service to jump onto. But uh, sorry, Matty, I jumped in on you there. Yeah, no, not at all, not at all. And um, the, one of the things that COVID has done is actually made certain parts of the NHS much more accessible. So you can now, you can have a telephone appointment with a GP um, and you might have a Zoom call with a GP. Um, a general practitioner is um, what GP stands for. And so if you've got a little niggle or a little ailment, they could probably sort that out for you, um, either online or on a telephone call. Um, so that part of accessing the NHS has, has become slightly more accessible due to COVID, which is, which is really one of the positives of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, just continue to move on through, guys. Obviously, um, we could talk about the NHS for a heat. Um, the work yeah. options. Um, so yeah, Maddie, give us a, a bit of an overview, obviously, um, of the type of works available, key stages, um, you know, the types of schools that we work with. I know there's not many support staff on the line, but if anyone had any friends that are support staff, then obviously there's, there is TA work available. Um, but for the teachers on the call, um, what would everyone be jumping into, Maddie? Yeah, so... Uh, one of the one of the fabulous things I think about working for um, ANZ UK is not only the community feel we set up for our educators, but the fact that we put you as educators at the very centre of everything we do. And so, if you say to us, "This is the type of work I want," this type of school I want to work in, and that's all we search for for you, and that's what we'll find for you. Um, so, if you're an early year specialist, a primary teacher, a secondary teacher will find you work within those settings. That challenges you and engages you and, and means that you're working to the absolute best of your ability. Um, we work with all different types of schools. So um, um, academies are slightly different to community schools or borough council schools um, in the way they're funded, but essentially that's their, their state funded schools um, and kind of the standard education system. Um, we work with private and independent schools, so they're fee paying schools. Um, so typically you've got smaller classes where perhaps the expectation is that you challenge the students a little more academically. Um, so if that's the type of school you wanted to work in, we can support that journey for you as well. Um, I know Tyler and Claire have both spoken about working within SEN settings and pupil referral settings. So if you want to work with those students who either their behaviour is quite challenging uh, for a whole gamut of different reasons, or they've been dealt a terrible hand. So um, perhaps some of these students will have physical disabilities or severe autism. Um, but we, we work with lots of those different settings and there's, there's always a need for good quality teachers to go and work with those young people. Um, and the reward of working with those young people is really quite different um, in terms of stepping out of your comfort zone in a mainstream setting and going and work with an SEN setting. Um, it is different and it is challenging, but the reward for doing so is just fantastic. Yeah, um, definitely. And, and, and no matter where you are on your teaching journey, so if you're starting as a grad or if you're 25 year experienced, we can we can support you with a role that will fight that will that you'll find interesting and challenging, um, and we'll keep you on your toes, um, and and we'll, and we'll make sure that that you're learning as well as offering learning to to your students. But really, what we want to do is listen to you as an educator, and so you tell us exactly what you're looking for, and that's what we go for for you, and, and that's what we'll support you with. Yeah, and that's spot on there as well, Matt said. Just think about your preferences in the lead up to the move. And you might be a little bit unsure, as well, which is totally fine. Ask questions, um, speak to our, our team and we can answer those questions for you. Um, but yeah, be open minded in the sense that, you know, trying a day at a school that you've never even heard of in the sense of a pupil or frill unit. Um, it could be, um, you know, a change in trajectory of your career. You know, SEN, as an example, teachers um, come over with ANZ UK, have never worked a day in an SEN setting in their life. They try it for one day. They spend their two years working in that setting and then they're on, you know, a completely different pathway. So um, be open-minded, give it a go. Um, but if you're not liking the school for whatever reason, 
just keep us posted. And then, you know, big thing for us is getting feedback from yourself on how you're finding those days and shifts out in schools. You're not liking a school, just let us know. And then we want, you know, we, we don't have, you don't have to go back <laughs> essentially. Um, but we hope that every school you go to, you have a pretty good experience and, and you're willing to walk through the front door the next day. Um, but yeah, just a, just we'll a quick moving. question. I think it was from Joanne or Joanna about reception and where reception yeah. sits. Um, so reception is, um, is the first year of primary school. Um, so you've got in, in key stage one, you've got reception year one and year two. Um, reception will uh, will will be delivered within a primary school, um, and so it's kind of the introduction to schooling. So those students who've gone from nursery will go will go into a reception year, and it's kind of that transition between not going to school and going to school. So it's like it's like a bridge into school essentially. Yeah, and Maddie, I think um, your oldest prayer just started um, year one, was it or? Um, um, uh, yeah, so it's a school we work with is ANZ UK, and so Ella, my eldest, has just started at reception at a school called Wimbledon Park Primary School, which is down in South West London. I love um, and we've got um, we've got a teacher working there at the moment who does PPA, so that's planning, preparation, and assessment cover. So if you're placed into a long-term role within a school or a permanent role within a school, you get 10% of your timetable where you don't teach the class. So and, and use that time to plan, prepare, and assess. And so other teachers go in and work with your class at that time. So we've got we've got an Aussie who made a journey working at a school who's teaching my daughter sometimes, which is just it's, it's really it's really <laughs> lovely to hear. It's really nice. <laughs> That's uh, so really it's, good. So the PPA roles are great actually. If you sort of have been yeah. teaching a bit and you think, oh, I don't, you know, I'm not sure whether I want to jump straight into a long term, but you still want to have the relationships with the kids and get to have and have colleagues. The PPA roles are really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, in terms of the um, the types of what, so that were obviously the different roles that are available in schools and the types of schools. But in terms of actual, you know, the the work opportunities available, um, we've got yeah three different um, uh, three different types of work that is available, which we've touched on briefly. But um, yeah, Matt, feel free to to give everyone a, a brief overview, I guess, of the different roles for everyone when they yeah. touch down in the UK. Yeah, perfect. So um, supply is kind of day to day cover. Um, so that will that will be sometimes emergency cover, sometimes pre planned cover. Uh, but since you go and, and you cover for a teacher who can't attend um, school that day for whatever reason, um, the, the the pay rates you can see there um, actually the the umbrella weight the umbrella rate we've now negotiated is 160 pound a day for London so which is which is lovely so you, you take home a little bit more um, a little bit more of your um, cash um, a great way to work on day to day supply is through our ready to work app. Um, which means uh, you can log on in the morning, let us know you're up and running and ready to go. And the first educators we call are those who clicked the little early bird to let us know they're up and running and ready to go. Um, uh, lots of educators come over, they start on day-to-day -day supply, they work in three or four different schools, they fall in love with the school, there's a long-term role there and they slot straight into that. And so it's a really lovely way for you to get introduced to different types of schools and settings. Um, if you just want to stay working on day-to-day -day supply, you absolutely can. We won't pressure you into any different type of role. Like I've said a couple of times, we'll, we'll look for the type of role that you want and we'll support you with, with whatever part of your educational journey you'd like to take. Um, Long-term supply contracts, um, so with those, you'd be paid to scale. So you'd be paid the equivalent of what a teacher earns who's in a permanent contract. Um, the advantages of that are, you know where you're going every day. You become part of the school community. So you start to build relationships really quickly. Um, you get support from your department and your team. Um, consistency does lead to behavior improvements. I, I feel like I'm preaching the converted here with all the teachers on the call, but, but I'm sure you guys know that. Um, that, those long-term um, contracts are great for your career development um, and look fantastic on a CV. Um, and you've got a great opportunity to get a reference from those. Um, and like that uh, last uh, bullet point at the bottom says that we can organize um, uh, Skype interviews so you can know which school you're going to touch down to, when you're going to start before you even jump on the big tin bird and come and see us. Um, or you can go into a permanent contract. So that means you're employed directly by the school. Um, so we would help manage the start of that relationship. We'd set you up for, for an interview and, and, and get you, get you in, in, 
into the school. Um, that's where you become an employee of the school. So you're not technically employed by NZ UK, but we'd love you to remain part of the community and keep coming to our socials and keep on the Facebook pages and keep sharing your stories uh, with other educators who do want to come over and, and, and be part of that journey. Um, yeah, so those, those are the three different types of work we can offer. Um, and like I said, we, we'll, we'll tailor those exactly to what you're looking for and, and, and we'll support you. Um, and, and your preference may change as well. So you might do a block of long term and think, actually, you want to go and do a bit of supply next and we can support you with that. Um, you might start on supply and move into long term. You let us know what you want and, and we'll support you with it. Yeah, spot on as well. And I'm um, looking at the next slide too. Um, we've obviously got some relocation bonuses to consider with that as well. So long-term supply contracts um, obviously is um, the one on the right from the long-term bonus. So um, if you're looking to go down the route of a long-term opportunity prior to your arrival, um, you would be eligible for um, up to £500 paid off towards your flights, um, which is super exciting. Um, and if that would be um, if you accept the role prior to departing to the UK. Um, so obviously that's something which will work with you on a case-by-case -case basis dependent upon the role. Um, but keep us in the loop if you want to explore that. Um, it is definitely worthwhile considering. Um, if that's not for you that and you just want to do the casual work, which Maddie touched on before, um, an ambassador the, um, agreement or guaranteed work scheme is what we could look to do as well. That would be um, where you'll pay um, your um, employee on a, um, an ongoing, I'm uh, sorry, a, a casual basis, um, not through a school, but through Ainsley UK, and when you're going out networking with different schools as well. Um, and that would be um, up to £250 paid off your flight. And both of these is once you've worked one term within either of the different contracts too. Um, we've also got um, a reimbursement for the visa um, support fee, which we mentioned earlier on. Um, so if you accept either of these two, um, you get $50 um, paid back off your visa um, support fee. So um, nice little uh, caveat there for it exploring either of those two options. If you don't want to do either, that's fine. And um, we can still support you with purely casual work, um, but we definitely recommend to promote these. They're really good um, way of having that job security lined up before you get to the UK, whether that's casually or whether that's in a long-term role as well. The um, educator referral bonus in the top right corner. Um, obviously we're big on the community aspect, which I know I've said a lot of times, but if anyone in your community um, of network um, or friends or anything like that university, um, feel free to send them our way um, and we can support them. With work, if we can support them with work for once they've done 10 days, um, you get um, hundred pounds paid um, to yourself. Um, if you're in Australia, it's a $150 voucher. Um, there is two different ways as well to get paid in the UK. Um, so we won't go through this too much on the call. It's definitely a conversation which we'll have in a follow-up uh, phone to phone, um, but you can get paid directly ANZ UK, which is through PAYE a company where we'd still be your employer, but the umbrella company would pay your wages essentially. Um, so there's not really the equivalent of the umbrella company in Australia. So you might think what the hell is an umbrella company, uh, but it's definitely something which um, is quite common practice when working in education um, settings through an agency over in the UK too. Um, we have recently developed a partnership with an umbrella company as well that we would um, recommend for everyone to consider joining if you wanted to go down that route um, where you get some extra um, uh, tax benefits with joining that, that company and um, you are able to claim back on certain items such as your flights and things you need to buy for your journey over and stuff like that too. Fundamentally, at the end of the day, your take home pay is very, very similar um, for both. Um, and we have op give you the option to go with either option as well. The biggest difference is just how you pay your national insurance. Um, in the UK, there's tax employees NI and employers NI. Um, so we won't go into that in too much detail, um, but it's very, very different to how we do it here in Australia. The Brits have done a great job of making it a little bit more complicated, um, but we help <laughs> you through that too. So you might think oh, this is uh, what's going on here. Um, but yeah, we, we talk you through all this as well um, as, as and when we get closer to the date when you're going through the contract signing and stuff like that as well. Um, but we could spend all day on this slide, um, but we'll keep on moving through. Um, I know it's 6.51. We've probably got about five slides to go. Um, so we'll, we'll roll a little bit over seven o'clock. So apologies if there's any um, dinner in the oven. Um, hopefully, um, yeah, just put it on simmer for a little bit and we'll, we'll get you guys out of here not too long after seven o'clock. So um, we've got the location options. Um, so Maddie, obviously you're in London. Um, speak to yes. us about the, the beautiful city. Yeah, so um, uh, so, it's, so as you can see, um, uh, see there, so um, the, there's some costs of living up there. Um, the, 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 the beauty about living within London is that you, you've got access to the, to the whole city on, on your doorstep and, and 
uh, and, and getting around the city is really, really simple. There's a great bus network, a great tube and train network. And Tyler and I were talking before we jumped on the call today that, that a really fantastic way of getting around, especially in the summertime, is to, is to buy a bike and, and cycle around the city. So uh, you can get yourself fit and then you can uh, save a bit of cash on your travel or, uh, um, as well. Um, the rent costs are up there, as you can see. So if you, if you, the, the, the further out from the centre of the city you live, the cheaper it gets to, the cheaper it gets to live. And so as you get out to Surrey, um, your your rent costs and your your living costs um, uh, do decrease. Um, but then if you want to get into the centre of town, it costs you a little more to get in there. Um, um, yeah, there's um, some gorgeous places out in Surrey. It's got a real lovely country feel, but you can fly into the centre of town and, and be banging the centre of town up in Waterloo or, or in the real hot spots of, of the city of London within sort of 25, 30 minutes from places like Epsom, Guildford and, and Woking. Um, yeah, if you're looking for a bit more of a country feel, like, yeah, Surrey yeah. is a really good option. Like, if you want to be out of the big smoke, um, you know, Surrey is a beautiful option, but he's still close. Like, Matt mentioned a few of the, the towns there, and the National Rail is massive in the UK. We'll talk about that in a couple of slides, too. Um, you can get back into London in literally 15 minutes, depending upon what train you get on, if it's a fast train or not. So, um, but if you want to work anywhere within the London, if you had on Google Maps the M25 ring road around London, pretty much anywhere within there, we've got relationships with um, with schools. But obviously, the more central you live, obviously, the less you probably have to commute from that perspective. Like if you're living far out, you might have to commute in sometimes. Um, but if you've got a long term role organised before you get there in Surrey, then you could just live close to the school if you like, or you can live further away. Um, it all depends on um, your preferences there as well. Um, and in terms of the day to day cost from a teaching wage, it's very, very workable. Um, you know, coming over um, as a teacher, you do earn less in the UK than what you do in Australia. The pay is, is lower, um, but the cost of living is lower as well. So, your daily rate, whether it's doing casual work or whether it's doing an ongoing contract, you can definitely enjoy yourself. Um, you know, go away on the weekends, go for dinner in midweek, do a comedy night, um, you know, shoot off to Brighton on the weekend or get a pain, a, a train to Paris or go to Greece. You, you can do all that stuff. Um, there's no magic number in terms of you need X amount to go. Um, we recommend to at least have, you know, five to $10,000 in savings um, because you need to factor in your initial up cost, um, uh, costs, um, upfront costs for rent. You got to pay four weeks rent and then usually six, six week bond too. So just factor that into your, to your budget. Um, and then, yeah, you, but when you get there, you, you can definitely live, comfortably off a teacher's wage as well. I'm um, still budgeting, um, but yeah, you can definitely do it. Share housing is super common as well, which we'll touch on too. So yeah, definitely um, if you're looking to come over solo, share housing is a great way to, to meet people as well. Um, and then that's obviously London, Surrey. Um, but if you're thinking, I don't want to live in London, everyone lives in London, I want to do something different, um, then that's great because we can help you with that as well. So Newport in Wales um, is right next to Cardiff. That we, Everyone probably would have heard of Cardiff before. Not everyone would have heard of Newport, um, but it's right next door. Um, and it's a beautiful uh, part of um, Wales and a beautiful part of the world. Um, so if you're wanting to, you know, try something different, live in a different part of the UK, um, Wales is great. You teach with underneath the Welsh, uh, within the Welsh curriculum. Um, so um, you'll, if you ever just Google the Welsh language, it's completely different. Um, the culture is very similar, but it is different as well. Um, and they're real proud, um, obviously, about the Welsh language too. So it's not a prerequisite to, to know um, or to be able to speak Welsh. Um, but they have it integrated within their education system. So um, all the Aussies that we've had go over to the UK absolutely love teaching over in Wales. Um, they couldn't speak more highly of it. So, um, and the Welsh team too, they're great. Um, so if you want to yeah, live over in, in Wales, whether that's in Southern Wales or maybe a bit more of a rural location, just let us know. But we really recommend to promote and to consider exploring that. If you're wanting to stick it in England, that's fine. Bristol is an unbelievably good choice. Um, I personally always said um, unbiasedly that if we ever, I'd ever lived anywhere else in the UK, it would be Bristol. Um, and then we just happened to open up an office there, which was great. So I was able to go there a few times on trips. Um, and a beautiful um, part of the world. Um, uh, pretty much um, for anyone in Victoria, say London would be Melbourne, Bristol would be Geelong, essentially, in a way, but a cooler version of Geelong. Not to dish Geelong, I love Geelong, um, but it's uh, definitely like that um, in the sense, got a really good vibe about it. And if you're not looking to live in actual Bristol City, lots of the surrounding towns we've got lots of relationships with too. So, um, and a, a really good point, Neil, um, as well, a really good question, sorry. Um, do you have any contacts in Northern England? Um, so we do have relationships with schools across the UK. Um, predominantly, the majority of the relationships are within the, the four regions, which you've just mentioned. Um, but we are always looking for educators who want to live in different parts of the UK. And if that's in Northern England, that's great. Just let us know. 
Um, what Maddie and the team will do, we'll be looking to try and support you with a role within your location preferences. Um, and if we obviously can find you that, that would be amazing. But um, what we do recommend, if you are wanting to move to the north of England and still partner with ANZ UK, just keep a bit of an open mind in the sense that if there was an opportunity that came down south to explore and consider it, um, if you only wanted to go up north, then just let us know that to them. And then we work towards that as well. Um, but Matt, anything further to add on to those points there at all? Or? Um, yeah, just just really briefly about the about the Northern England that we, we we do have opportunities up north. So if if you just let us know, just let us know where where you want to where you want to live and where you want to work, and we can support you with that. Um, we work with a network of schools called the Pixel Network, P I X L, um, and they've got schools all over the country, and we're an affiliated part of their partner there. So if ever they're struggling to fill a vacancy. Um, or they need support finding a teacher, they reach out to us. So there's a great opportunity to work through the Pixel network of schools. Um, and just really briefly on Bristol, um, if you like music and, and you're a music fan, then Bristol's definitely somewhere to consider because the, the evolution of electronic music, dance music, uh, hip hop, trip hop, um, there's loads of bands came out of Bristol. So if you're a music fan, Bristol's definitely somewhere you want to go and check out. Yeah. And also, just quickly, George has asked about Scotland. So, it's... yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Scotland's a, yeah, a little different. Um, so we don't yeah. have um, an um, operation in Scotland and it isn't, um, for as far as I know, Matt, you can confirm this isn't a place which we're looking to expand out to currently. Um, it is more challenging to get um, education work, um, education focused work in Scotland, just a different education system, different government, different requirements. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can't currently help there and there isn't um, the trajectory that we would any time uh, in, in the foreseeable future. Uh, yeah. But yeah, obviously reach out to us directly and we can potentially look to provide with some further insights into that. But unfortunately, it is, it is a lot trickier for an overseas teacher to get work in Scotland comparatively to England and in Wales as yeah. well. Um, I know we're a little bit short on time, but we've got one final poll and it's pretty um, apt considering the slide we're on. I just want to find out where everyone would want to go or where is everyone eager to go um, as well. Hopefully we've convinced you. I, I think Matt's convinced me to almost move back to Bristol and um, <laughs> get back into the, to the dance scene again. Um, but we've got a few different options here, guys. So thank you for that. Um, we'll end this one nice and quickly because I know we're, we're rolling um, over time. So um, thank you for everyone for contributing there. Um, London centric or London heavy more so, um, but that's fine as well. Like it, it is the big city in the UK. So we get it. Um, obviously Claire, Matt and um, myself have all lived there and Matt's still currently living there. So um, yeah, definitely if that's what you're thinking. Great shout. Um, but yeah, the guys who are looking elsewhere, that's amazing too. Just keep us posted with all those preferences. Um, Claire, do you want to give everyone a bit of a snapshot on, you know, how to find accommodation and, you know, what they can be doing in that space? Yeah. Okay. Um, what most of our teachers do, I mean, this is the big, one of the biggest um, sort of worries of people before they head over. Um, and you can do a little bit of uh, homework before you go. Um, most of our teachers, our educators end up um, staying in um, an Airbnb or a hostel or a cheaper hotel when they first arrive um, and give themselves a couple of weeks to actually physically go around and look at properties that they're going to rent. Um, shared housing, as Tyler mentioned earlier, is, is the way most people live over there. Um, there's a couple of really good websites which are there, Right Move and Spare Room. You can start browsing those um, there's also another one called Kangaroo, which is really good as well. But you can start taking a look at those weeks before you sort of leave. Um, and just to get an idea of what you can expect to pay in certain areas. So you sort of know what a good one is when it does come through. And then, you know, a week before you arrive, you can be sort of contacting some of those properties and trying to arrange some viewings for once you arrive you shouldn't ever commit to a property until you've gone and physically seen it. Um, you know what it's like, um, you know, a place looks amazing online and then you go there and it's, you know, the back flat and it's in a big council estate or, you know, you're walking past a few gangs to get there and things. Um, also on some of those websites, people will pose um, or put fake properties on there. So you've just got to be really careful. So you need to go and cite property um, but yeah if you do a bit of homework before you arrive um, you can actually get into something quite quickly as Tyler said you need a month's rent for bond and a month's rent in advance so you need to be prepared for that outlay um, 
Yeah, and then there's also some really good Facebook groups. There's Kiwis in London and Aussies in London, which are both really big groups. Um, and people will sometimes sublet their rooms as well. So, um, and someone might be coming home to Australia for a wedding for a couple of weeks, obviously not at the moment, but once things open up a bit more um, and, you know, people will go in and, and pay the rent on their rooms, which is, is another option for short term when you first arrive. Yeah, spot on. The biggest thing you hit on the nail there, Kate, is do plenty of research. Um, so what you want to be able to do is when you get to the UK, be really confident about what's worth what in terms of like, like if you go walk into a place and you're like, it's in Clapham, it's, um, you know, a room which is right near the common, um, you know, you, you should know, right, by me, that's worth about 150 quid a week and that's great. But if the, you know, the room's worth 100 quid and you walk, you know, you see it and you're like, why is that worth 100 quid? Like it, something might not be up, it might be a little bit too um cheap or it might be 200 quid you're like well I'm probably gonna be overpaying for this so then you that research that now is to know um it's just good to have in preparation and when you get there you walk through a place you can pull the trigger on something and two you don't need to be an expert you might make a mistake um but yeah obviously that that's fine as well um but yeah just do plenty of research ask heaps of questions um we got area guys i just posted into the chat to um to uh the link to uh, where to live in the uk really comprehensive um uh, Um, the around, around, around the UK, the public transport, transport system is amazing. amazing. Um, with the tube, you never look at the time when the tube is going to go. You rock up to the station and it gets there. But if you wait more than three minutes, you, you get frustrated. Um, obviously, as a Melbourneian, if I go to the station here, if I wait 20 minutes, I'm like, oh, you know, it is what it is. You don't really get that in England. It's it's pretty frequent. It's a rapid transport. So um, yeah, you can get around pretty easily through. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're looking to live outside London, um, you can explore getting a car as well. Um, you don't need a car. Um, the, the national rail system is amazing, but if you wanted a car and you're living in Bristol or Northern England, whatever it is, not a bad shout to consider. But if you're in London, probably recommend not to get one. Just get a bike. Um, a lot easier. Um, and then the term dates, Claire, as well. We've got, yep, just really quickly on this. Number. So obviously the UK are on a three-term year. Um, and um, each term is about 13 weeks long, which sounds horrendous, but it's actually really good. So you teach for six weeks, you have a one week midterm break, and then you go back for six weeks and that's the term and you get a two week block in between each term. So you've got six weeks teaching and then you've got a week in Italy and then you've got another six week <laughs> block and then you've got your two weeks, you know, through through Ireland and um, Scotland. So it's great for traveling um, and you've really got a block in the travel because the time flies. So they start on the 1st of September is the, the first day of the academic year. Um, and term two, notice there is no winter term. It's very um, positive over there. There's no winter, um, <laughs> go straight into spring term. Um, and that's early January. You'll notice they, they started back on the 4th um, and then the April term, which works around, it falls around Easter. Um, the best times to go for long-term work are obviously the start of the academic year or January. Um, but there also are a lot of, especially for primary, lots of long-term roles come through in April. Um, for day-to-day, -day, if you're relieving supply teaching, um, then you can sort of turn up any time. But obviously, that's going to start running out um, sort of in the last month of the academic year. So you need to sort of think about what type of work you want to do, and that sort of might dictate when the best times are to get there. Yeah, 100%. If you're thinking to arrive for the summer as well, which is the consideration that six weeks, um, schools are shut during that six weeks. So yeah. if you want to arrive in May or June, that, that, that we can definitely support with that. But it's just been across that, you know, a few weeks after that or a month or two, the schools will be shut. We do offer holiday work as well, um, but it's just not as common and it's just not the same day rate as well. Mm -hmm. So um, a bit of savings. Be, yeah, exactly. Um, but if you're looking to arrive for September, that's great. That's the start of the academic year too. But just speak to the team and any one of those terms you can arrive in with no dramas. It's just all about being prepared for what's available at that time. So, um, and then when you get there as well, um, you know, obviously we want you to, to obviously be part of our community, but there's lots of other communities which you can jump into too and lots of travel you can do. I'm a big motivator for everyone. Maddie, do you want to give a, a quick 30 second rundown of um, what everyone can do when they get to the UK? Yeah, of course. So, so guys, yeah, when you touch down, if you are looking to travel, do speak to us before you book anything. 
um, because we've got those affiliations with the travel companies there. Um, if you mention you're working through ANZ UK, you like to get a discount and um, um, and they'll get the red carpet rolled out for you as well. Make sure you're really well taken care of. Um, whilst you're over in the UK, if you want to um, uh, play some sport, we've got affiliations with local sports clubs. So um, we, we've got um, connections with um, AFL clubs for men and women, um, netball clubs, um, cricket clubs um, and um, AFL Europe and AFL Wales are um, we, we are in partnership with those guys as well so if you wanted to go and um, kick a footy around or go and watch a bit of footy then you've got those options as well yeah. here. it's a great way to start building your community and uh, even if you just want to go and watch you go, go and have a beer on the sideline and, and, and have an atta with whoever you're watching it's a really great way to start building your community up. yeah 100% it's so good like the clubs have got affiliations with a great the ones where demons in particular you go down to the clapham common um on a tuesday night in the middle of the summer and there'll be 120 people there training um and they you need to have a minimum of um british uh and irish or european players too so it's not just aussies they need you need to be playing with brits and um and irish too so or not just irish european anyone from europe um so it's good really good way to meet people and it's so, so much fun so definitely explore that um guys we've literally got two slides ago um and yeah this is pretty much the second last one so maddie for everyone coming over like what obviously spoken so much about ANZ uk um but is there anything which we just wanted to sort of summarize for everyone about you know why partner with ANZ uk so i think we've, we've mentioned a few of these things before but they're, they're, there's a couple of key reasons as to why you should come over ANZ uk the first is that we put you as the educator at the center of everything we do um so you are the most important cog in the wheel and we, and we do everything we can to take care of you, not only with the school you get placed in, but also with that community development. So you come and you have an incredible time inside school, outside school. Um, the, 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 the second bit for me is that we, we, work in, we work entirely as a team. And so that means if you say to us, you're not enjoying the school you're working at, or you move in London, or you move outside of London, everybody is as invested in supporting you with that transition um, as everybody else. Um, and that's not the same the way other recruitment companies work. Um, and so, so that means that you get that support no matter what you want to do, what you want to achieve. Right. Everybody who works for ANZ UK is invested in supporting you um, throughout that journey and, uh, and, and, and throughout any challenges that you might face. Um, we've, been, we've been supporting educators coming in from overseas for the past 16 years. So we've got great experience of doing it. And like um, Tyler and Claire have done, they've done the journey already. And so, so many people who work for ANZ UK have paved the way for the journey that you're about to make and can, you can, can share their experience with you and, and help you make that transition. Yeah. And we want you to come along to events as well. Like obviously we're doing an online one, which is great, but, um, and events obviously for the past two years have been very challenging to do, obviously, for, for, for the um, obvious reasons. So um, this year, we are, are back hosting events. Um, so in Australia, before you go, um, keep an eye on our events page, keep an eye on the Facebook group too, um, which I'll just post into the chat as well. So if anyone ha is on Facebook and wants to join the Facebook community group, feel free to, to jump onto that. We'll post events in there. It's a really good way to network out. Um, so if you are traveling solo, um, you can just meet other people through that group or through the event. So come along to as much of it as you like. Jump onto our blog page, um, the Exceptional Talent at LMS, um, which is a, an online PD platform, which we have. We've got an info packed, packed full of information. So um, lots of resources, lots to digest. And um, we know there's a heap that we've gone through and there's a heap more we could. Um, but in terms of that, a big thank you. Um, you know, we really appreciate everyone taking the time out. We know we've rolled 10 minutes over, so um, apologies. Um, but we, we, we promise that I'm hopeful, we hope that the 10 minutes is worth it. Um, so if you're not following us on Facebook or Instagram, if you're not in the Facebook group, jump into it. Um, if you've got any friends, anyone in your network who wants to potentially look to get supported over in the UK or even just locally in Australia, um, do let us know. Um, and we want to hear about your journey. Um, so I know we're speaking to a few of the, the guys and the gals on the phone, um, but if we haven't spoken with you personally, um, do please send us a follow-up email or SMS. Um, we'll send the webinar recording um, so you can relive the magic in your own time. Um, and we'll also share the webinar slides as well. Some of these slides hyperlink out to some of the slides that we've mentioned. Um, so feel free to have a look through that um and yeah question time i know we're all over so if anyone needs to run off there's nothing more um unless anyone had any other questions um feel free to turn your camera on um chat whatever it is um we're happy to yeah stay online for a few minutes if anyone had any questions to to shoot out to um but if you don't that's fine as well you don't need to stay out anymore <laughs>
I just have a question regarding curriculum, just sort of how it compares with Australian curriculum. Yeah, great question. I'm happy to, to run with that one, having done it in Australia and also over in the UK. Um, what, what do you teach, Joanna? Like, what, are you, what year? Um, you, are I've you... done kindergarten for four years, and then this year I'll be doing year three. Nice. Well, good, good luck, obviously, in, in the year three, jumping into the primary phase. So um, it's super transferable, um, the curriculum. So um, everyone who journeys over um, finds himself being able to really, you know, adapt quite quickly. Um, being an overseas trained teacher, um, schools are aware of that as well. So they know, understand that when you first get there, you, you're going to need a bit of support in terms of those, um, you know, the differences, um, such as, you know, the terminologies, the way um, which the schools work in terms of pupil progress and tracking it through data and stuff like that, which is a little bit different um, in um, in the UK comparatively what is in Australia. Um, but from a primary school, like if you were going into um, a grade three class, it'd be pretty similar content to what you're doing in Australia to, comparatively to the UK. They've got the different key stages, um, which we really recommend to have a look on the Gov website um, and you can see where you'd sit. Um, if you're a year three teacher, you'd be in key stage two. Um, and then that different curriculum points are all listed on there as well but yeah everyone who comes over it's not worldly different it might be a fox and see a point in the UK. um obviously that might be i'm back i think <laughs> oh can everyone hear me it yeah, lags at the sorry. end <laughs> <laughs> sorry i could hear um yeah it all, it all went blank but yeah in short in summary um it's very similar <laughs> And you, you'll feel when you get to the classroom that um, you'll be, okay, I feel um, I, I'm not out of a fish out of water. You, you'll feel pretty comfortable in the, in the UK classroom. But do plenty of research leading up. If you're doing a contract role um, before you, if you line, line that up before you get there, um, the school can provide resources, what you're going to be teaching, all that stuff before you even get to the UK too, um, as one good example of considering a long-term role prior to arriving. But you don't need to do that. You can get all that when you get there as well. Hmm. So in Australia, I work at a private school and over there I've heard it's, um, they probably prefer, well, just a conversation I've had with someone, they say it's easier to get work in a public school because it's, you know, parents are paying for private education and they prefer UK, people with UK um, curriculum knowledge to teach in private schools. So what does, how does it like private and public compare? I think I'd, I'll jump on and take this one. Yep. Um, I think the the whole of, certainly the whole of the London school system, and I think largely the UK school system are really excited about welcoming overseas trained teachers, especially from Australia and New Zealand. There's typically, speaking, I'm speaking in very broad and general terms here, there's a rigour to the training that you go through when you're trained as a teacher in Australia and, and or New Zealand that, that is not quite the same as in the UK. Um, and so the idea of having an Aussie or a Kiwi in a classroom is really appealing to, to schools within the UK, whether they're independent schools or whether they're um, uh, state funded schools. Um, like, like we said a few times, if you have a real preference to work in an independent school, let us know, and that, that's what we'll look for for you. Yeah. Um, there, are, there, there are groups of schools that are publicly funded that work in a more private school way and, and operate in that way. So typically the um, single sex um, state funded schools have more of a private school feel to them. Um, and have a bit more perhaps of that academic rigor that you might find in a, in a, in a, in a private school. Um, and so what I would say is don't, don't rule anything out, but talk to us about your preferences and we'll do our absolute best to, to find a school that, that, that suits your requirements that way. Thank you. We work with some great independent schools as well um, mm -hmm. that have like good long-standing relationships with ANZ UK too. So um, yeah, definitely that's your preference. It, it is something we can support with for sure. Um, so yeah, just keep us in the loop around that. But there's lot, lots of work opportunities in that space. And 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 typically speaking, those independent schools work with ANZ UK as a preferred supplier because of the access to the overseas pipeline. So it's educators like yourselves that encourage those private schools to work with us as a company. Great questions there, there Joanna, really good. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask, shout out anymore um, or forever. I shouldn't say forever hold your peace because you get lots more opportunities to, to, uh, to ask questions. So, um, but yeah, obviously on this call, um, 
yeah, we've had, I personally had a great time speaking with everyone. Thank you so much for everyone's questions. Um, like I said, reach out to myself, to Claire. Um, and what we ideally look to do is get you teed up with a conversation with someone sitting um, in our UK offices as well. Um, so you can hear from someone calling off a plus four, four number. Um, and then that way you can um, obviously start that process and um, yeah, get the ball rolling further. So um, jump onto our events page. Um, please come along to any, you can do come to these in person. We'll do pre-departure drinks. Um, we want to yeah speak to you meet you, have a drink, um, and obviously, yeah, and talk about your travels and, um, yeah, get excited. So um, we'll call it a wrap, guys. Um, really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, any questions, just please share in the follow-up. But um, tomorrow we'll send an email with the slides and with the webinar recording as well.